the Chamber of Commerce and others had been asking uh, uh, the government to skirt trust laws, to allow them to kind of return to monopolies by setting prices um, to halt deflation. Uh, Hoover had said no, but FDR cuts a deal with them. He says that if the corporations will agree to recognize unions and ways, uh, raise wages, um, uh, then, then he, will, he will loosen up regulations on monopolies and trust. He also gets business to support public works programs. Traditionally, business is hostile to these sorts of things because they tend to see them as competition. And all this, this bargain he cuts with the corporations results in the National Industrial Relief Act, uh, which is passed in June of 1933, the NIRA. The Federal Recovery Administration, which is run by Hugh Johnson, ask every business to pay a minimum wage. It's not mandatory. Well, they just ask businesses to pay this. Uh, depending on wh what job you're doing, it's between 30 and 40 cents. They also ask to limit the work week to 35 to 40 hours um, and end child labor. Now, these two things have long been goals of labor, just simply to make the working man's life a little better. But when the Great Depression comes, that's when we finally limit the work week. And we do it to spread the work around. It didn't seem right for one guy to get to work 70 hours and another guy to be completely out of work when we could turn those into two 35-hour-a-week jobs. And so that, that, that limited work week, uh, just like ending prohibition, it doesn't really come around as a goal in and of itself. It comes around as a way to combat the Great Depression. Ending child labor, by the way, was also not a moral crusade in the end. It was this idea of, hey, man, there's a kid working when there's a father of a family of five over there unable to work. So we ended child labor ultimately um, in order to try to make sure that more adults could be able to work. Price floors were set on some goods, um, and then this got businesses to go along. Large corporations dominated the writing of these codes, and they wrote them in such a way that it helped large businesses and it hurt small businesses. Uh, but that was the deal that, that FDR had to make to get support for these things. There was no punishment clause uh, for not recognizing unions. This was essentially a voluntary program. The Public Works Administration uh, was set up to hire people uh, to work for the government in all kinds of different capacities, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, but it spent its $3.3 .3 billion very slowly, uh, and, and, and those initial works programs probably weren't as impactful as, as they could have been. Industrial production actually fell at first, but by the spring of 1934, um, uh, a board is put in, in place of, of the National uh, Recovery Administration, or Relief Administration, uh, and it's going to kick into high gear. But then here comes the Supreme Court stepping in. In the Schechter case, they strike down the National Recovery Administration, a Relief Administration, uh, uh, claiming that it is, uh, uh, violates the Commerce Clause, meaning that it is the federal government doing things that are a state government's business. It also says that Congress cannot cede that much power to the President, that it has strengthened the President too much. And that ruling threatens all New Deal legislation because it has concentrated a great deal of power in the hands of the executive branch. The AAA and the NRA create a planned economy. But it wasn't planned by the government. It was planned by large businesses because Roosevelt had turned to them as partners in this effort. Other programs, however, were run by the government. For example, the Tennessee Valley Authority. Utilities had long prevented the completion of a government dam at Muscle Shoals, Alabama, that had begun back in World War I. But in 1932, a scandal broke revealing that Southern Electric Companies, uh, which were private enterprises, were massively corrupt and been, been, been severely overcharging electrical uh, uh, consumers, consumers' electricity. The anger towards these utilities resulted in a demand for a publicly provided electrical utility, uh, which leads to the Tennessee Valley Authority in 1933. They finished the dam that had been begun and began to build others, and they electrified the rural part of, southeast, of the southeastern United States. They attempt to develop local land um, uh, and, uh, to re and reforest the area and bring in scientific agriculture, but these efforts are blocked by business interests who see government uh, being involved in these things as competition with their uh, economic interest. But they did end flooding in the area, are severely limited, uh, bring electricity to the area, dramatically improve transportation, and significantly drop uh, the rates people are paying for their electricity. FDR saw direct aid to the needy as a minor and temporary part of fixing the country. The Federal Emergency Relief Act uh, gave uh, federal money dollars to the states to run relief organizations. This program was run by Harry Hopkins. The administration hated the idea of a government dole, 
Uh, that's the word they would use back then for giving people money for nothing. Uh, but they could get behind, FDR could support work relief, meaning that if you were willing to work, um, even for the government, uh, then, then the, the government was willing to help you out. The Civilian Works Administration, which ran from November of 1933 to April of 1934, so it was a fairly short-term program, employed four million Americans doing infrastructure work. Uh, and it was a success. They, they, they built all kinds of things. We'll get into that in a little bit here. FDR's favorite program, though, was the Civilian Conservation Corps. And this, my grandfather worked in that. One of them did. This created national parks. Uh, when I say created, the land had been set aside, of course, uh, beginning with Lincoln, but we expanded greatly by FDR. But I mean they went in and they created campsites. They built uh, roads in the parks, uh, ranger buildings, um, uh, picnic tables. In fact, if you go to a national park today, and even a lot of state parks today, you'll find stuff that was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. They improved farmland, and they did conservation work around the country. They built land dams. They, they rerouted waterways to, to prevent uh, erosion in sensitive places, that sort of thing. And it was a highly successful program uh, that employed a lot of Americans and kept them going uh, through these tough times. The Farm Credit Administration refinanced 20% of all farms in the country. Uh, unfortunately, though, it wasn't enough. More than a quarter of all farmers will lose their land by 1935 anyway. The Homeowners Loan Corporation of 1936 refinances more than a million homes. And the Federal Housing Authority, created in 1937, insures mortgages uh, for repairs and construction. And all these programs, together we call them FDR's Alphabet Soup. And there's all these acronyms you can memorize if you want to do that sort of thing. Um, and, and, and it was this the FDR's approach that, that we're just going to try everything. We'll just do anything. Uh, his attitude was we're desperate, so what do we have to lose? And here's a great cartoon from the period. Um, uh, and we'll talk about this in class, but if, if you've never seen this or you're not in my class, you may pause for a minute here and check this out. <laughs> 